Anyway, um, outside of having to sign a few people, pretty much the boring parts of free agency are done. You know, scouts, all of that, taking care of all the fun stuff, cap whales. Uh, we are going to have to overpay to get people onto this team. Uh, you notice they got rid of the interested tab. That's a shame. But, yeah, we are going to have to overpay some people to actually get them to sign on this team. As much as I freaking hate that, it's pretty much the only way to do it because people are upset about our team chemistry, which is something I normally don't have to worry about. We are now going to have to be very, very worried about <laughs> Very, very borderline, uh, or not borderline, I read the word borderline in chat. But yeah, very, very boring part of the process here, and uh, it's only made worse. What kind of dog do I have? She is a Jack Russell Terrier Whippet Mix. Oh my god, the contract the rejections right now are killing me. Fuck. Alright, well, let's see if I can sit in the next season with this many players under contract. If not, we'll have to figure it out. But god damn it. God damn it. Yeah, plenty of pictures of my dog on Twitter and Instagram. I think there's plenty of pictures of her on Instagram. Hey, we do have enough contracts. Anything like that? I think there are plenty of pictures of her on Instagram. Actually, there hasn't been a picture of my dog on Instagram in a long time. I mean, that's just the wrong content. You scroll down far enough, you'll find her. And then me making funny faces in jerseys. <laughs> That actually got to piss people off. Which is great. How old is Doggo? She turned 10 uh, about a week and a half ago. I don't like to think about it because it makes me feel fucking old that I've had this dog for 10 years. But it's been 10. Yeah. 10 goddamn years. All right. So if we drop Belpedio or Cross, let's drop Cross. That would be an entire NHL defense. Made up of only players that we drafted. And then forward-wise, uh, we could do the same. Have it be players that we drafted. If it's, you know, probably not the best uh, decision in the world. But it is one that we could do. Thorson, Lavin, and Sevenen are all ours as well. Is there anybody that we can drop down that was not drafted as a Greenville good dude? No. And then defensively, I think we just run it. I think we run it. So the three lowest rated guys, Stevenin, Lavin. Right, it had to be three, right? Because that's 10, 11, 12, 13 with Thorison. Um, so Thorison's a medium bottom six. Thibodeau, AHL top six. Romeo, AHL top six. I guess I'll drop Thorison. He's got a better chance to do well in the AHL. So let's see... Uh, what the hell this team looks like then? Michkov's up to a 72 after one season, so that was a plus seven. It has him scheduled to play with Ragnarsson, and then Denver Barkey it puts on the left. Interesting. Interesting. If we wanted to sort this by potential, this would be the way to do it. We'd want Jaeger... On that top line instead. Barky, Brown, and then honestly, yeah, higher rated in Molnar. Gombach. That uh that looks okay. Pop van would technically make it a plus one. Maybe that's the better way to go. So let's just say theoretically. Who's the better face off taker? It is Jaeger. Ragnarsson, Jaeger, Michkoff are Three best players. Pot Van with Barky and Cole Brown. Got a couple of wingers on this team. That guy is the best at face-offs. I mean, you know, it's it's getting there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's getting there. Um, this coach does not fit this defense at all. So that kind of sucks. That uh, really sucks. But, uh... Oh, hey, there we go. 
That's that's the way right there. I'll have a minus three on the top pairing, but then everyone else will be fine. Honestly, if that's the case, we just got to sort it by potential. Screw the minuses or whatever. It doesn't matter. So Morin and Koyston didn't get the most time. And then Hamannick will be with Ellis. Belpedio will be with Yell. Kincaid, Grossnick, and Goal. And that madness is what we're running with. <laughs> and this will be the season out of the three young guns where we find out which one of them will step up and be a leader. Will it be Ragnarsson, Jaeger, or Mechkov? Who will be the leader of this team? Who can show the most improvements in a variety of ways on the ice? Well, our coach is actually a B minus. We should probably, probably fire you. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're gonna do that. Uh, Corbett, how well do you fit the team? Fifty-eight scheme fit. How well does Tierney fit the team? Fifty-seven. Fuck it, we'll go with Tierney. Why not? Uh. Let's get Huberto, right? Yeah, let's get Huberto on the power play coach. And then AHL coach-wise, that's pretty much good to go. Can we get an AHL goalie coach to help fill out this team? A-plus teaching. Love to see that. Mr. Eliash, please sign with me. And then our scouts, I never play with morale on. I did for the first time. I'm not a big fan of the system either, to be honest. That's why I do normally play with it off. Um, but the idea was, you know, we're kind of basing this around the concept of the morale system is important. So, like, it is, in theory, a good system. It's just not fleshed out enough yet. That's its biggest issue. Like, there, there is a way to put it all together. To have this be like a, a must have feature to have on. It's just, it's not there yet. I mean, th there's just a lot, there's a lot to do about it too. Like I said, it's, and it's just an entire conversation where I'm trying to decide if I really want to get into it. Um, <laughs> but it's just the idea too of, there's so many little things you can add to it. Like for example, the AI having to pretty much play someone within their proper listed position. And if they don't, have it be, hey, Jeff, um, we want you in the lineup, but there's not a spot on the right wing and you only play right wing. Are you willing to go to the left wing? And then the guy says yes or no. And then you still have the choice, even if they say no, to be like, well, Jeff, I hate to tell you, let's try it anyway. And then he can be like, ah, I'm a grumble, grumble, grumble. But there's just... You know, this just, it needs to be way more expansive than it is. That's all. The potential is there 100%. But they do need to expand it. And really flesh it out a bit more. And if they do, I think it can be a tremendous feature. But, yeah, right now in its current state, it is just way, way too basic. There's just not enough meat on the bone to make it interesting enough to have it be worth the hassle of navigating the extra menus and going through the morale meetings. It's just not there. Do other games have such a system? Uh, NBA does have a morale system. Yes. That one, too, I also find gets boring pretty quickly, though. So FIFA also has its own kind of sort of morale system. Uh, but it's also very, very basic. It's essentially through text messages that you're just like, oh, this player's like, oh, you know, coach, I really want to play this week. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Or, nope, sorry, I have someone else in mind. So. Beef is probably the best of them. You know, I agree with that for the same reason that you just said, Major. It's, it's very basic. <laughs> and it's not that big of a pain in the ass. But, yeah, I don't know. I do think there is a lot of potential for the whole morale system idea. 
It's just, are they willing to take the time to make it more expansive like it needs to be to have it be worth it in a way? Because, you know, it sucks in a lot of ways. It's like the morale system, owner mode. Like, there are scenarios where that would be worth playing franchise mode with those settings on. I never do. Like, I'm sure I'm in, like, the top 1% in terms of people who play franchise mode the most year in and year out. If I don't have it on, that should be viewed as a problem. If I view it as a little bit expendable. And I don't know how many people do <laughs> view it as like, yep, no, that's a feature that I always make sure to have on. You know? All right. Ragnarsson, Jaeger, Michkov. All three of them with a version of Snipe. That could be... Uh... And they're all in the power play, too. That could be interesting. And Zach De La Roca is pissed. To this day. He's just... Pissed. Use Fog of War. I don't mind Fog of War if I were to play in an offline setting, but from an online setting, people that watch just want to instantly know. You know? Like, I remember we played with Fog of War on a couple of times, and for the most part, it was just like, eh, whatever. And then there was a, a series that we did with Carolina. By the way, I'm going to put the uh, over under to four and a half wins again for this season. Um,. There was a series that we did. It was very, very rule heavy in like NHL 1920 with Carolina. And if we had Fog of War on, but essentially all I would do is just scout out what line they would be on. Because that was what was relevant to the series for me is playing people within their proper role, which you still see me do a lot. Um, and so all I'd have to do is just scout out, like, oh, this guy's a third liner? Cool, that's all I need to know about you. Because then I can look at the points and everything else like that. Uh, 53, 48, 63. What does Fog of War really do? It just hides certain information. What a player, you know, what player type, uh, the role that they should be on. It can hide attributes, stuff like that. But again, in a in a game where players with similar attributes, you know, everyone has fucking similar attributes. It's like, oh, cool. It doesn't make a difference to me that this guy, if you're playing with the A's rosters, it's like, oh, cool. That guy only has an 80 shot instead of an 85. What a drastic difference. Stuff like that. All right. My dad used Fog of War and you still haven't found him. You got to get better scouts. <laughs> it's been 16 years. All right. The Matt Vay Meechkoff, Braden Jaeger led good dudes. Uh, 07 and 1 to their NHL tenures. I thought maybe I set the bar. Oh my God, 10 0 to Washington. I thought maybe I set the bar too low at four and a half wins. That appears to have been good. Um, there's our first win. It's against Vegas. Uh, another win against Los Angeles. Okay, we're, you know, guys being dudes on Saturdays, you know? Getting a couple wins here and there. The Weekend Warriors beat Ottawa in a shootout. St. Louis, oh my God. Well, hey, we have four wins. Make it five. Again, we should have said it. We should have said it higher. We should have, we should have. I got the line right, the betting line for the first season. Uh, not so much for the follow-ups, though. Not so much for the follow-ups. <laughs> and much like last year, we get to our fifth win and then just start losing hand over fist. So, uh, that kind of blows. But, again, right now, having top lottery odds every single season, that is very, very, very good news for us, so... I'm not complaining. I am not complaining at all. All right, we'll list ourselves as sellers again. Again, nothing we can do deadline-wise. We'll see if anything crazy happened, though. What's the plan with this series? To see if this dumb idea can somehow help us win. To see if somehow this stupid idea 
could actually end up with us winning something. I highly doubt it. But uh, Ilya Mikheyev is now a Calgary Flame. So that's cool. Shout out to Ilya Mikheyev. Marcus Patterson to Anaheim. Philip Mazar to Anaheim. Man, Anaheim moving. Brock Besser is a Golden Knight. Adrian Kempe to the Coyotes. Jesus. Good deal there. For the Coyotes. Braden Yeager, 44 points. That's a new franchise high. In this series, we're testing Tukey's patience. That's another way to that's another way to phrase it. I like these challenges of all right, how much of a nightmare can this be? You know? I like them. I do. They're a fun time. They are a fun time. All right. All right. All right. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Seven seventy and five. <laughs> With Liam Ragnarsson setting the new franchise record for points in the season with 53. Way to go, Liam. Up to an L. Oh my God, he went up by seven points this season. So Liam Ragnarsson, 27 goals up from a 77. It, right? It was a 77, wasn't it? 77 to 83? So a plus six. For some reason I was thinking it was a 76. Uh, Braden Yeager, 51 points, 37 for Meechkoff, still at a 72. Ugh, that's not good. 35 points for Barky, and then it really dropped off from there. Defensively, Etienne Morin, 30 points as a rookie. Not bad. And we were as bad as designed. And then goalie-wise, yeah, Grossnick and Kincaid both under an 890 as expected. Honestly, it could have been worse. I genuinely thought we were going to lose more games than what we did. Um, let's see. Nick Ehlers. Crushing it. Crushing it. Achilles, perhaps. Braden Point. You guys can look there. Only, uh, only five players to break 100 points this season. That is down from the prior two. Top goal scorer, Matthews, Pasternak, Kucherov all hit 60. Why Caulfield, Wild Caulfield, Goodrow, Ehlers, and Bedard all had at least 50. Again, with Bedard going to the Kings in this run. Uh, defensively, 92 points for Rasmus Sandin. Jesus. Again, defensemen are just broken sometimes. And then goalie-wise, Vassy and DeSmith, each with 42 wins. Casey DeSmith now in Seattle. Save percentage king among starters was Hellebuck in Arizona with a 925. He signed a one-year deal. Shutout leader, three guys with eight, including Hellebuck. It was Gustafson and Olmark. Rookies, 66 points for Sami Pakarainen. You had Maverick Bork up there, Michael Benning, Cutter Gauthier, and our own Liam Ragnarsson, Sean Farrell, too. Pretty good rookie class. Yeah, 43 points. For the second overall pick last year, Sammy Pakarainen, who was not available for us to draft. But hey, uh, honestly, optimism, hope, optimism. I mean, our locker room chemistry is at 18 goddamn percent. I'm still going to immensely struggle trying to deal with that. But uh, <sighs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. This idea... This idea is nuts, okay? It is. This idea, it's it's a little bit silly, okay? A little bit silly. But maybe, just maybe, we can make it work. They've turned on each other. Well, that's the problem, too, is the entire team is made up of locker room cancers, so you would expect that the chemistry would be worse. As the Winnipeg Jets win the Stanley Cup in 2025... 
Beating, wow, so that's the second time in three years Montreal has lost in the finals to a fellow Canadian team. Brutal. FX, take douchebags, make them into good dudes, win. That is the goal. And hopefully it works. I say that because so far, I'm not sure if it's going to work. <laughs> I'm not sure... If it's going to work, you know? So, you will, uh, we'll see what's up. We'll see what's up. Whew. All right. AHL-wise, by the way, Belleville beating Henderson in six games. Uh, FX not using real players. Wow, Ragnarsson went up another three points up to an 86. Holy shit. He must have won the Calder. He, well, no, he, no, there's no way he won the Calder. Why did he go up another three points now at the season? That's insane, but I'll take it. Uh, Winnipeg, by the way. Yeah, Ehlers, Perfetti, Connor, Morrissey. They signed Joe Pavelski. Yeah. And uh, all it took was replacing Hellebuck with Sam Montembeau. That's all it took. Award winners. So far, again, it's been Edmonton, Washington, Winnipeg. And Sam, thank you for another gift sub. Uh, Ehlers wins his second straight Art Ross, as well as the Hart. Sandine wins the Norris. Calder went to Maverick Bork. Wow. That Finn was robbed. Ehlers wins the Con Smythe. Hellebuck the Vesna. Another Masterton winner for us. San Jose's coach won the Jack Adams. Robert Thomas wins the Selkie. Ehlers the Ted Lindsay and Matthews. Another Richard. AHL-wise, Blake Wheeler. Top point getter. Francesco Pinelli, the league MVP. Cole Eiserman, top goal scorer as well as top rookie. Top defenseman, I, it's Kim, right? Kim Noisianen? I think it's Kim. It might be Kai. I'm pretty sure it's Kim. Uh, Capo Kakadin, top goaltender. And Angus Crookshank, MVP of the postseason for Belleville. So that sets us up for another draft. Will we have... The top odds. No. Well, we do have the top odds, but we don't have the top pick. We fall to number three. <sighs> we fall to number three. That could be rough. Could be. Jeff Carter, Derek Broussard, Derek Stepan, amongst others, called a career, including multiple-time cup champion Patrick Maroon, wild legend, Edler, Schultz, Strawman, Radko Gudis is gone. And in goal, Grice, Dobin, Kincaid, Aaron Dell, Grosnick, our goalie trio that take up a shitload of money, all just retired. Ryan Reeves and Jordy Ben both became scouts. The pre-draft interviews, so this was the Michael Misa draft, did not have character issues, which is good news for us because we can't take them. Terrell Bradford, no character issue. So we need one of these guys. Yanni Nieminen. No character issue. James Hagens. Last chance, Reginald Wagner. Fuck. All right. Well, now we uh, now we got to start looking elsewhere. We won't have somebody who is expected to be. I don't even know if I want to bother looking at those other guys. Oh my god, our scouts did nothing. Our scouts did nothing. Oh my god. Potential to be a true leader. Is there anybody who's just a dickhead? Like, what the hell? It's the NHL. There's got to be one dickhead in the first round that always falls. That's how it works. Oh, my God. Well, this is... Um, this is a disaster, is what this is. This, this is what I was afraid of, and if something like this happens... Too often, it can be uh, bad, bad news for us. 
Mm. Team utilization was in the conversation to be um, eligible or to make somebody eligible. I was trying to dip away from it if I could. Um, at the same time, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to dip away from it. This, this could be a problem. I do want to look at progress reports really quickly just to see how good the progression was this season. I mean, Jaeger's up to an 80. Michkov now is 77. Okay, so we did get some player development this year. At least Michkov didn't hold at a 72. But yeah, Liam Ragnarsson's already a second line forward. That guy's sick. They played like Theo Fleury. It's a red flag. Hey, we might have to get more creative with what we consider to make someone eligible here. Uh, but Misa goes to the fucking Oilers. Of course. Uh, maybe he'll be the one to finally help them win. Um, so again, I mean, we've kind of already looked through all of these dudes. Um, it's not looking too good. Not looking too good at all. Jordan Gavin, I mean, if there's not anybody in the conversation, then yeah, we might have to use teammate utilization as the uh, as the tiebreaker at this stage. I was hoping to find someone who's around first round eligible to be worth it. Or, you know, to essentially be eligible for it. It's just... Sorry, I'm just kind of stunned at the... Uh, Lack of options. Seriously, there's not anybody where you doubt that oh okay, maybe they won't maybe they won't be able to handle the pro the pro game. There's not anybody in that conversation. Cool. And there is this guy, Marcus Stromberg, but he's a second round option. Uh so really, yeah, there is only one guy, and that's Jordan Gavin. Uh, if we don't take him, we're having to take someone in the second round. Um, I'm I'm going to take him because, Jesus Christ, we need to. <laughs> we need to. Shout out to Jake from State Farm for the follow. If we don't take a guy like this where it's kind of fringe-ish borderline, um, then, yeah, we're going to have to... Uh, you know, we're going to have to make some choices, essentially, uh, in a challenge like this. So we'll do what we got to do. So Jordan Gavin, we will take third overall. He is a 75, but he's only a medium six. So it's not as if it's like, oh, my God, this home run you shouldn't have had. Like, he's solid, but he's not a, uh, a guarantee by any stretch. We do have Dwight Salcedo. Hopefully here in round two, it gets to be a little bit easier to decipher who the picks should be between. Yeah, you can see teammate utilization does pop up a little bit more often. And the whole passionate but gets emotional at times. I don't view that as inherently a negative. I wish Gabriel to... Oh, he is available. Some concerns if he could handle a professional environment. Gabriel Dag. That might be... That might be our goalie. That might just be our goalie. Especially when there is a lack. Ooh, a Philip Coe. Okay. Especially when there's a lack of some other options here. It's emotional at times, passionate to win. Can we sign Jake for 10? I, I need Jake for Tannen's regen. This is what I need. Jamison Rudder. Rooter. Rudder. Rotor Rooter. Okay. I think we're good. We're good. Felipe on vacation in Portugal. 7 a.m. Jesus. Well, thank you for the 55 months tuning in from Portugal. Uh, it's uh as Crash Andrews has named it, daft to glory. And you turn dickheads into winners. 
So goalie-wise, Gabriel Dag would be a very good choice for us. Defensively, holy shit, there are actually a lot of options. Uh, there is Spezza. I'm projected four years out. Phil Coe is confirmed three years out. Only has teammate utilization. Honestly, out of these three, I think Dag fits fits better. So far, I'm thinking Dag fits the best. This guy does have the outright character issues listed. None of these guys had character issues. And then forward-wise, you see Hirvinen. Concerns about the professional environment. Ruder does have the character issue. Stromberg. Reefer. Okay. So for forwards, Tobias Reefer is the German would be the safest bet at a medium nine three years out. There's Stromberg, who apparently could have a good shot. We don't know for sure, but is also three years out. I'd be willing to take the risk on Stromberg more than Rafers. There's Jamison Reuter. Don't have him too scouted, but obviously the you know the letters that are popping up there aren't the worst. Unconfirmed, or confirmed actually, three years out. And then Hirvinen as well could be promising, but he's a Total shot in the dark. So I think... I think we're down to four. I think we are. I do still think Gabriel Dag might need to be our guy, but man, if Marcus Stromberg or someone like that is a steal, all these guys unconfirmed three years out, or confirmed three years out, excuse me, one of them was unconfirmed at a three out of four. It's tough not to take Dag. I think we're going to go for Dag. 73 overall medium star. I mean, that's our goalie, man. That's our guy. That's our guy. I never would have thought he would be one of the players eligible to us. Sontag was a medium elite, but he's not ours. Stromberg was only a medium nine. Pospisil was never an option for us at a low elite. Latowski wasn't an option. Rabbit wasn't an option. Ferentz. Well, so far, we made the right choice. That was the best player available to us at that stage. Now, Rooter is still available. Rutter, Rooter, whatever you prefer. The Rotor Rooter. Is there anybody else? That fits the bill here. There was Reefers again, who could be worth it now. Again, teammate utilization might just have to be a full-time factor just to give us more options. Do I think I can actually win a cup doing this? You know, we have uh, we have succeeded in some challenges before that we never thought we'd have a shot at. Because franchise mode is weird. So do I think it could happen? Yes, because the key word is could. Will it happen? I don't know if I'm betting on that. <laughs> but theoretically, it could happen. Right? Maybe? Right? Please? Everything's possible in France. Exactly! That's the attitude we've subscribed to for so long. That is the attitude that we have subscribed to for so long. And it's gotten us this far. Alright, so. We got a minute left. No goalies. Okay, yeah, that's way too many players to look at. All right, round number three. Round number three. So, in goal. Teammate utilization, professional environment, he stays. Professional environment, he stays. Only teammate utilization, we're going to drop him. Only teammate utilization, get dropped. Only utilization. And then Lettinen. 
It's also utilization, but we could make the argument. Forwards. This is for Met, professional environment, outright character issue, character, 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 environment. Okay. So, if we were to drop this down to, okay, what forward? Gaspar, or not Gaspar. Yeah, Gaspar Vermet. Three out of four for a low top six. Three years out at 18, that's not too bad. Ruder, and the grades look a little bit better. Three years out at 18. Javon Wolski looks terrible. 19 as well. Oscar Shardine, four years out at 17. Grades don't look as good based off of what we know. Uh, Skylar Ballard, again, doesn't look as good. And then Reefers, three years out. Reefers is the safe bet. Reefers is the safe bet, is the safe the bet. Smart. Bereniak, the unwise. Thank you for the primer. Welcome in. Now watch, watch this drive, a.k.a. watch this blown pick four years out for Oberg Lettinen's confirmed three years out so is Chan he's going to be like a low four love the content thank you for that appreciate it I'm glad dumb ideas like this entertain for some reason <laughs> alright three years out it's got to be one of the four and in my mind, I'm leaning towards the defender because we probably need another defender in the mix. And it's a Finn. Topi Lettinen. Low four at a 61 overall. Not amazing. Not amazing. Will there be any of those dudes left? No, there will not. Did we make a dumb choice? Uh, Reefers was a 62, medium 9. I'm not seeing any medium top 6 forwards or any medium leads. Rudder was a 65, low 6. Yeah, I mean... Chant. Well, we did take that guy out of the running for some reason. I don't quite remember the justification for him not making the next round of consideration. Um, I'll just say that I have regrets. My God, this could be an enforcer. It's an enforcer with character issues. Yes. <laughs> That has to be the guy, right? An enforcer with character issues. Okay, there are some of these guys, like two out of four medium elites. It could be worth it. Righteous Heathen, the one year. Appreciate a guy like Kyle Clifford on the first line. <laughs> Heathen, thank you very much for the year. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead and use our time out here because we are going to need to use another one. We are going to need to use another one. All right, so again, let's look back. Uh, Kreps doesn't fit. Teammate utilization. Fortunately, Markstrom's not a fit, nor is Peverly. Fantastic leader, that doesn't fit here. All right. Well, there were a couple of guys at the top, but since then, it's been pretty rough, if we're being honest, in terms of these guys that are available. Teammate utilization for Svitov, for Dillman, character for Nikita Bure. Do 
We have anybody else. Anybody else that fits teammate utilization for Tier Vinen? Alright, I think. I think we've just about run out. There's Serge Bouchard. Anybody else? Nick Brunstrom. Well, if we do open it up fully, the teammate utilization, we're looking all right. They won't get top priority, but unless we can be like, well, they're the best. So. Shot utilization, teammate utilization. All right, medium six defenders is pretty much the last we're looking at. Okay, so. Goalies. We have two. Oleg Kaheznikov and Brian Timmons. Kaznikov's obviously looking like the better one. They're both five years out, though, at 18 years old. Defensively, holy shit. There's the Shirokov guy. Three out of four, medium elite. Unconfirmed quick pick, but that's tough to look past. Is Elnia could a five-year out with that potential? Five-year out, five-year out. Four years out for uh, Mironov, who's not looking that good. Honestly, it might just have to be Shirokov, hoping for the best. And then there's only three forwards left. The problem is, who do we take in this next batch? And it feels like, okay, so it won't be Vyacheslav Mironov, because Shirokov's there. It comes down to Shirokov or Para, the Enforcer. And that sucks, because those are two players I would have loved to have had for this team. Um, even Kaheznikov is right on the fringe, man. So it's a good thing we took a goalie earlier. So it is either. Three out of four confirmed medium elite Alexander Shirokov. Who actually has positive character. But did have teammate utilization. We gotta rule him out for that. He has positive character, but his teammate utilization sucks. It's gotta be Para. He's got Tugnus! I didn't even notice. He's got strength. He's got confidence. And he's got Tugnus, baby. They still haven't fixed it. It's gotta be Dorian Para. He's the guy from the Niagara Ice Dogs. <laughs> 48 overall, medium top six enforcer. Dorian Para. The proud, proud member of the Greenville Good Dudes. Awesome. Next up. Uh, we have Bouchard. We have Timmons. That was definitely for you. It's my greatest claim to fame. Let me tell you. We got Bouchard, Timmons, Tierweinen. All right, so let's see. Uh, there is this defenseman, Tiervine, and has positive character. We'll rule him out. There's the goalie, Timmons. Another goalie wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Or there is Serge Bouchard. Gotta be honest, we already have two decent goalies. Oh, the other one ended up being... I wouldn't have taken him anyway, because while he had bad teammate utilization, he had positive strength, so I would have ruled him ineligible anyway. We could always go back and look, but uh, we're going to go for Bouchard. I know it's less of a higher ceiling, but we're going to need forwards more than we need to, uh, goaltenders at this point. Yeah, medium bottom six for Bouchard. Um, that said, were there any crazy... I mean, Shirokov was a medium four. So pretty interchangeable. Pretty interchangeable, actually. Bouchard's not that bad, at least for where the team is at this stage. Round number six... Altec's not a bad idea. Anaheim would be smart to get the Brinkett, in my opinion. Round number six. We have Svitov. Has positive maturity, but bad teammate utilization. I gotta rule him out. Positive maturity, that's not what we're after. We're looking up to pick 197, ideally. There's Jacob Dillman. Has positive character. Gotta rule him out. All right, so we're having to go a little bit further down the board than we wanted. Do we even have anybody left? We do. 
Nikita Bure. Confidence, but bad character. Perfect. Perfect. Confidence, bad character. Uh, Magnuson does have good character. So Brunstrom and Bure. They're confident dicks. We're going to go for Nikita Bure, the Ukrainian. Next was a medium seventh. And round number seven, we will go for the center, Nicholas Brunstrom, who is also medium bottom six. Honestly, though, for us, all usable players, right? Like, at least they should be. There weren't any AHL potential guys. I feel like that actually worked out relatively well for us. A confidic, if you will. So goalie-wise, Gabrielle Daig can be signed and will pretty much immediately go to the NHL. Uh, Louis Belpedio can finally be dropped and will sign Lettinen and Bure to their ELCs. Uh, we'll sign Bouchard to his ELC as well. Again, Michkov up to a 77. So he's gone up 12 points in two years. We'll sign Para. And then down the middle, Jordan Gavin. Our third overall pick will drop Bishop and we'll sign Brunstrom as well. And the team is starting to take shape in terms of, well, these guys were drafted by the team. But no doubt right now, our star player is last year's first overall pick, Liam Ragnarsson. Uh, what's your take on when to play certain guys, AHL or NHL? Like, what are the cutoffs? Um, so for me, typically, like if it's not a weird series like this, it will be pretty much when it says they're an NHL caliber player. Um, you know, in a challenge like this, though, it's different because sometimes legitimately like the, the chance of putting Michkov in the NHL, sometimes he will skyrocket and over and overall other times it is best to just leave him unsigned for the three years, then play him in the AHL. Um, like, honestly, in my experience, it feels like a coin toss half the time. Because we've also seen players like Para, that if he was a low elite, I've seen players like that jump 20 overall points in one season. And that's both unsigned and in the AHL, NHL, like it's just, it does seem to be a, a coin toss. So sometimes it, it does benefit you to take the risk. Um, yeah, I would say for the most part is try to keep the, the proper pipeline. So, like, for me, typically, it would be someone 65 and up, you'd start to say, okay, AHL talent, and then 75 and up is NHL talent. So, someone like Para, if I was doing, like, a, a Boston Bruins franchise straight up, I'd probably leave him unsigned for the three years. But, despite the similar colors, it's not what we got going on. <laughs> So Dorian Para signs, and I guess we're going to do one more season tonight. I feel like we have to because I'm I'm having fun with this. I'm having fun with it. Even though our locker room chemistry is at 